Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's lesson we're going to be looking at how we can create this amazing water sim. What we'll be using for this water sim is the Chaos Phoenix Ocean Texture and we'll be rendering it in Corona but it will work for V-Ray as well. So anybody that's using V-Ray don't worry the workflow is almost exactly the same. So just before we start, I'd just like to ask you guys, if you don't mind, please uh, support the channel by subscribing. And also, if you want to check this scene out for yourself, you can find it on my Patreon and I'll link that below. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm just going to close this animation that we have over here and I'm going to show you step by step how to get this beautiful little simulation going. Okay, so let's close that. So here we have our little scene and we are going to create a plane. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to subdivide this plane. We're going to give it say 400 by 400 segments. Hit F3 and that's going to give us our segments over here. So we don't need to create a box or anything, just a plane is fine. Okay, so we're going to move that over here. We're going to click on F to go to front view, G to switch our grid off, and we are going to move our water level to somewhere around here. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. So how are we going to get this to this place? Usually what... Um, most kind of people do in the beginning is they'll use a noise map inside of the bump channel but that kind of it's it's a very regular pattern it doesn't work that well the uh, phoenix ocean texture works a lot better and on top of that it is animated by default which is really cool so what we need to do with this is we need to go to our modify panel and we are going to add a Corona displacement modifier. And that is over here. Inside of V-Ray also, you'll have the V-Ray displacement modifier. So you can drop that inside uh, on top of your plane, or you can drop it into the displacement channel inside of your material, your water material that's going to be applied to this plane. So the first thing we're gonna do after that is to go into our material editor we press m and that's going to bring up our materials and we are going to jump into our camera by pressing c okay so we are in position and the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to apply a simple material on top of this plane so we can have a look at what's going on and we're going to just press f10 to get us into our render panel and we're going to just press on start interactive so what we need to do is we need to add our map inside of this channel over here so what we're going to do is we're going to come down to phoenix fd and we are going to select the FD Ocean texture. Press OK. And now we can start to see that this is starting to affect our geometry. So as you can see, 1000 is too much. What you need to be really careful of is essentially what uh, scale you're working in because that's going to play a big role in all of your settings in terms of your displacement and also the settings inside of your ocean texture. So we're going to come back to say one millimeter. I know that this works. In my previous uh, one, I actually used a 0 0.5, which was more than enough. And on top of that, we just need to change a few settings. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to instance this uh, Phoenix Ocean Texture into this slot over here. So we can have a look at some of the settings inside of that. Before we do 
uh, a change of settings over here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a water texture on top of this plane and the way we can do that is just go into our Corona material library and we're going to choose a simple water texture from there if you want to see how to create a water texture from scratch you can go and check out my other pool uh, caustics tutorial and there I create the texture from scratch but for this uh, tutorial we're just going to choose a simple one from here and adjust it a little bit and we are going to choose clear water apply it to our plane and at the moment we're not seeing anything we're starting to see a little bit of reflection on top of that but not much so one thing that we need to also uh, tick over here is the caustics which is going to start creating our beautiful caustics inside of our pool so that's starting to look pretty cool and we also need to adjust the color of this water so we're going to go down to our volumetric scattering and we're just going to change this absorption color to a greenish bluish color so the color that i used before it was something around this it was more or less I think it was around 62 120 and 125 something like that and then the scattering distance of around I think it was three meters I see 300 is too little that's 3000 is the one that we're looking for and the results should be pretty good now so that's looking pretty cool and we're going to just pop into our ocean texture over here and look at a few settings for this kind of animation that we're going to be doing now it is almost good to go there's just one or two things that you need to change over here and that is the playback mode so if you want to create a loop the cool thing is that you already have an option over here which is loop and the loop is controlled by the loop length so in seconds over here usually I would suggest doing at least five seconds and then that can loop so we're going to change that to five seconds and over here is the rate of change and the rate of change is essentially the speed at which your ripples are moving on top of your pool so it also highly depends on your scale uh, that you're working in if you're working in millimeters uh, i would suggest a setting of around 0 0.5 or somewhere around around 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 is is pretty good so the animation that i showed you before is a speed of of around 0 0.5 I would if I had to do it again I'd probably drop it to 0 0.4 maybe 0 0.35 one other thing that I would recommend is going to check out the Phoenix website for 3ds Max and this is just going to give you a small explanation of what all of these settings do uh, they don't really concern our pool simulation that much but it's good to just check out some of these examples so you uh, so that you have a better idea of what's going on and before you render out also you need to make sure that inside of your render settings you have your caustic silver enabled this is very important otherwise you're not going to get these nice caustics over here and inside of your render general render settings I rendered it at just HD standard HD and we're going to make it a range of 0 to 125 frames so when playing 25 frames a second that is going to give us the five seconds that we require for our loop after that all you need to do is you need to go and save your file over here click on files choose your des destination folder I rendered it as PNG for the moment you could render it as a target for EXR whichever one works for you even a JPEG if you're uh, just previewing it and then once the image sequence is rendered we drop it into 
After Effects or Premiere and stick it all together. Okay, guys, so that's it for today. If you want to check this file out, it's on my Patreon. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.